Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we are back on the website of Amati uh, Auctions uh, based in the UK and we're going to have a look at their affordable auction. So now this has been live since the 16th of July 2021 and it's due to finish on the 28th of July which is tomorrow and actually some of the listings are due to finish quite early because there's so many of them so actually it's about 13 hours time I think see here yeah, 13 nearly 14 hours some of the first lots will um will finish because there is i think kind of over 300 uh lots or so i just kind of double check that but uh, as normal uh buyers uh premium here on amati is 22 percent uh check all the shipping rates look at all the stuff and kind of make sure that you're uh kind of happy with all of that um let's just see if we can just figure out quickly how many uh, items that we have there to go through how many pages so we've got nearly 50 lots a page so and we're on eight so yeah we're getting getting close to yeah 356 so there's a lot of items to go through um, so yeah we might have to blitz uh, through this one um, quickly but um, without further ado, let's uh, let's crack on and see uh, what's here. So, a cello labelled supplied by W. Thompson. A uh, good thing is we get to see a bit of the kind of the bid history because we're getting near the end. So that's five hundred and fifty pounds for that. We'll have a quick look if the internet's working at some of the bits, and then we'll move on. Um, we do have the condition reports here so extensive woodworm damage to front back and scroll so it's quite interesting to see here the good Amati color coded condition reports uh, we'll try not to go into too much detail on all of them unfortunately because we just don't have the time uh, a cello labeled made in the workshop of Andreas Zeller so this is the Romanian uh, import instruments here so it's pretty standard stuff um, and another Andreas Zeller one, so we don't need to. It's made for stentor, so these are very kind of low quality student instruments here. Uh, a cello, unlabeled, current bid 220. Let's just have a quick look at the images. I have to say it's uh, running quite smoothly, the internet today, or the site even. Uh, a cello labeled Meister Airpard Minor, current bid 10 pounds. This once again looks like a very low value student instrument. A cello unlabeled. That's a bit more of a interesting shape there. Very kind of smaller scroll. It's a slightly curious one. Has a lot of a uh, few open cracks, missing purfling, some repaired bits, some new wood. Um, let's quickly uh, enter the 360 viewer here. Just have a quick look at that. The famous Armati 360 viewer. Very uh, useful. A cello labelled Vittoro cello. Manufactured by Museum and the DDR. For Boozy and Hawks. So another kind of low value student instrument there. A cello unlabeled table by another hand which is also currently separate okay a cello labeled Antonio Stradivarius looks like a fairly standard trade cello there although 2200 that's uh must be looks in very good condition actually. I wonder what the report says. It doesn't say a lot, so it's a bit of worm, closed cracks, bit of new wood, but it looks fairly, fairly good condition. So I think that explains the price there. Cello unlabeled. It's quite wide in shape. Looks a little bit rough around the edges. A cello unlabeled, sold with one bow. Looks like it has a break on the button. Let's quickly see what the condition report says here. It doesn't really get new wood there at the button. A cello labelled Derek Steel. Now I've had a look at this 
auction and there's actually a few violins as well labeled Derek Steele so I don't know if it was an amateur maker that was just storing instruments in, in his house or something like that good condition so might be an interesting uh, cello a cello unlabeled interesting F holes on that interesting scroll there and mechanical tuners this would be a really interesting scroll to see from the front so it's a bit of a shame that there's no uh, no picture of that uh, it's got a big kind of open crack on the back sound post crack it's unfortunate new wood closed cracks so 750 those going for it. it's an interesting uh, looking cello that but in unfortunate condition a cello labeled WM Smith uh, Stockport Cheshire 1823 let's have a quick look at this there are so many cellos in the uh, in this auction not too bad condition wise cello unlabeled I think it's fairly standard it's kind of potentially Eastern European or Chinese production a double bass I think this is the only double bass in the uh, in the catalogue no condition report on this one mm, it's quite interesting nice call 1200 is a bid so far it looks uh, curious a viola labelled copy of Antonio Stradivarius one comes with a violin and three bows there must be a pretty terrible violin then to be thrown in with it uh, this looks very kind of standard a viola unlabeled looks like another fairly generic kind of trade instrument there uh, viola unlabeled this looks very much amateur uh, work that could be an interesting instrument there uh, a 7 8 size violin labelled copy di Antonio Stradivari £750 is a bid on this I'm not really quite sure um, open seams on front trouble side why this is going for so much but I mean the 7 8 is quite popular um, yeah that's interesting but that's a popular item uh, Violin labelled Antonio Stradivari, Duccia Arbeit, 1886. We'll just look at a few more pictures there. It's like fairly kind of trade-ish instrument. Another Strad labelled violin, slightly pinched uh, centre bouts there. Another kind of trade instrument. Uh, violin unlabeled looks fairly modern let the violin unlabeled it's a slightly more interesting nice kind of back to it see what the uh, condition report uh, says there various cracks and repairs to head yeah lots of closed cracks that's slightly more interesting 130 current bid on that violin branded Dresden so another kind of pretty standard trade violin that another violin unlabeled yeah this is a another fairly standard instrument I think we can probably start skipping through some of these half size violin there slightly more interesting than some of them and a violin labelled uh, Jean-Baptiste Collin seems quite popular and a violin unlabelled that's very uh, yellow violin branded J. Priestnall 1883 Rochdale Yeah, it's got some browns on the back. Interesting uh, shape there. Just quickly see what the uh, condition of what seems open. 
general damaged varnish that's not too bad 350 on that one at the moment finally labeled medio fino looks fairly standard kind of trade finally labeled M Suzuki Nagoya it's kind of Japanese uh, workshop violin that looks quite interesting violin labeled Theodore Berger violin labeled Schuster & Co another kind of standardy trade one there violin labeled Walter Muller Thirty pounds is the bit on that. Finally labelled uh, copper of a strad from Dolling. Some more kind of tradey violins, as you'd expect from uh, this auction. Uh, violin unlabeled. Slightly more interesting. Another unlabeled violin here. Quite a nice figure to the back of that. A violin labeled Nicholas Amatus. The trade violin looks like the back's open, needs a bit of work. Not too many bids on that one so far. Uh, violin labeled Direction of Lewis Chipotel looks like another tradey violin of not the greatest uh, level violin labeled CW Rippingal Leicester interesting uh, F hole shapes there so scrolls a bit amateurish looks like amateur English work I think looking in the corners a violin unlabeled this I think is an interesting violin that I've actually looked at a bit earlier than these deep scratches uh, what appears to be deep scratch on the back so they're not saying a, um, a kind of an issue with uh, some post crack in the back has a graft uh, but it has some worm damage uh, all over the sides here so that's a bit of a problem I uh, don't know if we can see that on the viewer let's have a look can we see any worms you can see some holes that are there uh, it's interesting that's one of the ones that I found curious uh, another Strad labelled violin yeah low quality trade violin there unlabeled another kind of trade violin there are a lot of violins in this auction there are about 200 so it really is uh, a lot of this kind of stuff uh, violin labelled Louis Germain another kind of tradey kind of type of instrument a violin unlabeled yeah it's a bit of a stamp on the back but it's still pretty tradey violin uh, strad label again another kind of trade instrument there's lots of uh, lots of these around violin labeled maidstone maidstone is just a uh, very low kind of trade German ones that's a bit of interesting scroll there another Strad label yeah just more low quality trade violins another Strad label there yeah still fairly tradey maybe a little bit uh, better than some of the others a uh, violin unlabeled yeah more trade stuff I have to say the internet's working so well today. A violin labelled Mark Dearlove, Leeds, 1813, 210 is the, is the bid. Not 100% sure about uh, this one. It looks potentially interesting, but uh, not 100% convinced. Interesting uh, shape on the top bounce. A violin labelled John Baptist Schweitzer. Other kind of tradey uh, 
vial in there. Let's just see what it says here. Good condition, apparently. Violin unlabeled. It's a bit of a interesting choice of wood. It looks a bit uh, amateurish. That one. Uh, violin labeled Johannes Franciscus Presenda. Interesting. It's again kind of interesting shape. That's an interesting. Uh, F holes looks like once again amateur work, I would think. Finally, labeled Joseph Guarneris. Uh, this could be made by the uh, the person that made the other one. Eh? Same kind of interesting uh, F holes amateur scroll work. So it looks just kind of amateur amateur work there. Uh, Finally, labeled Wolf Brothers. What kind of tradey? Uh, stuff there, Medifino, just more kind of very low quality trade instruments, you see it in the varnish and quality of wood, uh, violin unlabeled, it's quite narrow, another trade violin, violin labeled Uta Music Violins, so I think this is a, be a Chinese uh, violin potentially. From the label, from the label, and it kind of looks like it potentially workmanship-wise. Um, a labelled Andreas Guarnerius. Looks not too bad, but still fairly kind of tradey. Violin unlabeled. All kind of the usual as we say violin partially labelled not too interesting uh, another unlabelled violin just mostly tradey stuff uh, Carlo Bergonzi label yeah once again this is low quality trade Finally labelled El Tesoro. Once again, it's it's another trade instrument, slightly better than some of the others. Finally labelled John Baptist Schweitzer again. It's just this same old kind of trade instruments with kind of fake neck graphs. Finally uh, labelled Nicola Marti. Another trade instrument, uh, another made stone here. So this is just more standard, low quality trade stuff. Although some of them are starting to look, some of them look quite nice. It's quite variable, really. Uh, violin unlabeled. They just imported them from all over uh, the place, so there is a bit of variation. Some of them look nicer than than others. Uh, another unlabeled violin. This is all much same. The figures a bit more interesting on there wood there, a few closed cracks, another unlabeled violin with the Magini double purfling there, just another tradey instrument, another unlabeled violin, nothing too exciting. Another Strad labelled, looks like it's just going to be another trade uh, instrument, yeah. Speeding through, unlabelled violin, the folds look a bit uh, low, yeah, just another trade instrument there. Violin unlabelled, interesting back there, it's quite wide. Interesting shape. What does the uh, condition report say on that? Yeah, interesting crack there by the button. Um, nothing too outrageously exciting, but a little bit different. Another Strad label, Czechoslovakia. The label, yeah, just another low quality uh, violin. A violin unlabeled.
more trade stuff. Another violin unlabeled. This is slightly more interesting, but it's had some horrific things going on. There's like a patch under the foot. Net graft seam open and upper trouble side. Yeah, so it's had some problems here. Mm, it's a real shame about that kind of uh, this patch that's been cut in there. Otherwise, not too bad looking instrument in some ways. Uh, violin labelled George Gallo, Aberdeen. That's uh, definitely an interesting looking instrument there. I've seen a few instruments with kind of F holes like that. A bit more kind of amateur stroke kind of out in the uh, in the sticks kind of style of making. Uh, violin labelled SH Dodd, 1937, Lime Cottage. So this is definitely a uh, kind of an amateur maker's thing. The shape is pretty bizarre. The F holes are pretty odd. Let's just have a look. Yeah, a few bits missing, but not sure what that would sound like. But more interesting enough. Uh, violin labelled Nicholas Amatus looks like a tradey type thing. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Uh, another Strad labelled instrument. Some more uh, tradey violins. It's pretty normal. Violin unlabeled. This one looks like it's in a bit of a state, a bit slightly uh, curious looking. Um, let's have a look here. Neck graft, it's got loads of uh, a few open cracks and a few closed ones, so it's a bit uh, bizarre, quite narrow, uh, but a bit different to some of the others in any case. Uh, a Baroque violin, unlabeled. Looks like pretty modern. Brock violin there looks pretty standard. Yeah, good. That's some kind of modern workshop thing. Violin unlabeled. This looks a bit curious here. Kind of interesting uh, scroll there. Uh, some big cracks here. Missing bottom block seems open. In the back top bottom of instrument center join partially open. That's a bit uh, curious one, that one. Uh, violin unlabeled. Let's have a look at this. The kind of interesting uh, thing there. Extensive woodwind damage to the table, neck and scroll. Oh, looks pretty, pretty bad. Uh, interesting uh, F-holes there. Bit uh, bizarre. Uh, violin unlabeled. Let's have a look at this. Interesting, looks a bit kind of hopf like in a way. Uh, seems open in front and back and up and lower about, otherwise, not too bad. Bits, corners a bit uh, off. A uh, violin labeled Vincenzo Giorgio. Interesting uh, varnish on that. Looks like some kind of neck graft. Yep, neck graft. It's had the uh, some bits replaced or changed in the f holes there, so that's a bit uh, that's a bit of an odd one. A violin unlabeled. Let's see, Not bad back. It's kind of. Eastern European kind of thing, good, yep, yeah. looks fairly normal. Uh, violin there with Suzuki, yeah, it's pretty low quality type thing. Violin labelled Carl and Otto. Another kind of trade instrument, that practice violin, there we go. Some people obviously like that. Violin unlabeled. This is slightly more interesting. Comes with a bow. Interesting kind of back there. It's like a neck graft. 
Net graph seam open and lower bounce had a lot of repairs, lots of bits changed. That's a fairly interesting uh, instrument. Uh, violin unlabeled. I think it looks kind of another tradey type thing. That's potentially kind of French trade. Another violin unlabeled. Yeah, pretty standard. Violin labeled El Tesoro again. The same old, same old violin labelled parrot. I think these are usually kind of Chinese. I think these ones, made yeah, made in China. That makes sense. Four hundred uh, violin labelled the Andreas Hartmann violin. Oh, it doesn't have its uh, fingerboard. Looks kind of tradey again. Violin labelled Christian Benker. Pretty uh, bright varnish. It looks once again pretty low quality trade. Uh, Strad labelled violin. It's been messed around with. It looks like on the varnish. Slightly more interesting. I'm not sure about them. Another Strad labelled one. Yep, pretty standard. Violin labelled Frank Wasek. Looks like that one's been messed around with a bit as well. And the varnish. Violin unlabeled. Looks like a another tradey thing. A violin labeled John Hardy. Slightly curious F holes there. Interestingly looks a bit kind of cheap on the back, but I think it definitely has some age to it, uh, closed crack there, odd shape, odd have f holes but has some curiosity value about it, violin, Germany, 20th century, it's another kind of not very good trade instrument, a violin is called R. Addison, maker, Bishop Auckland, 1897, Slightly interesting scroll there, but not sure about that one. Violin labelled Nicholas Amatis, just more kind of tradey type things, maybe a little bit more interesting. Another Strad labelled. Yeah, same old, something funny going on with the button on that one. Uh, another Strad labelled. Yes. Same same old tradey stuff. Violin unlabeled. Looks just fairly tradey but a bit more curious. Uh violin labelled Antonius and Hieronymus Amati. Slightly different, interesting kind of um scroll here. That's pretty swan like. That's a bit curious. Let's uh just have a look what the things say net graft. Yeah, slightly more interesting that one. Pretty bizarre with the neck there. Finally labelled uh, Strad again. Yeah, it just looks like the usual type thing. A violin labelled Hawks and Sons. So, oh, that's interesting. Bird's eye on the back, and it's got the Magini style double purfling. So, that's interesting. Some people will obviously quite like that. A violin unlabeled. Looks like it's been messed around with varnish wise. Oh, no. oh that's popular, that one. Violin unlabeled. Well, let's see what that is. In good condition. Let's look at this again. Maybe I'm missing something here. I mean, it has its. Yeah, actually, if you have a look, it's got quite nice uh, perfling actually. So maybe that was a bit uh, premature to write that one off. Yeah, you do need to look at these pictures in detail sometimes, but yeah, I suppose the scroll is kind of uh, it's interesting. So I would have probably just gone right past that one, but 
some people definitely see something in that one and I can close inspection see a bit of stuff in it uh, violin unlabeled interesting back but it looks pretty tradey another Strad labeled instrument interesting birds are on the back there it's quite curious but once again fairly similar finally labeled Carlo Bruno looks pretty standard finally labeled Sachetti Gianetto and Flo 850 on that one not 100% sure on that violin labelled Joseph Vavra looks pretty standard violin labelled Jacobus Steiner looks like a kind of trade violin late 19th century kind of thing it's just a violin unlabeled it's fairly standard low value trade violin labeled John Betts not 100% uh, sure on that one let's once again have a look at the corners yeah hard to say I'm not not convinced on that one violin labelled Geronimo Barnabetti looks lost its eye looks fairly standard there violin unlabelled if holes are a little bit uh, wonky it's a very kind of uh, exaggerated waist there like kind of pushed in looks a bit amateurish uh, violin unlabeled uh, it's one of these ones with a uh, horrible geometric uh, patterns on the back it's, uh, another kind of trade thing for the tourists another violin just pretty standard but it shows you it's easy to kind of overlook things when you're looking through it quickly here we go violin labeled Derek Steele so this is Derek Steele doing some stuff it's all this is very amateur work not particularly nice uh, Nicholas Amatus trade violin there uh, violin labelled Derek Steele another one here same thing like not very refined a bit uh, bit nasty no uh, offence meant um, violin labelled Antonio Stadvari just more kind of trady stuff here but you do really have to look at these pictures closely to to know another strad violin sometimes you can see from far away what something is but sometimes yep you have to dig in closer uh violin unlabeled okay oh, interesting a lion head violin there let's have a quick look at that I think that's nothing too crazy but the violet the um the line on this is it's not the worst i've seen it's not too bad it's slightly better than an average uh, violin unlabeled these ones with like a decoration at the back so once again standard -y kind of stuff there another magini double purfling type thing nothing much to see there a violin label made by Johan Juham. Let's have a quick look at this. Hmm, interesting back there. A bit of a neck graph there, but that's got loads of things here on the back. It's pretty messed up. It's uh, that's interesting. It's an interesting enough violin that one. Uh, violin labelled Star, eighteen ninety one interesting quite deep scroll flute not scroll fluting uh wing fluting there on the f holes that's slightly curious uh violin labeled phoebe it's pretty plain 
Violin labelled Antonio Stradivari. Some interesting bits to that scroll. Another Strad label. Nothing too exciting there. Violin labelled George Klotz. It's got a bit of a net graph there. Yeah, net graph, but not sure really if there's anything too exciting in this. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. Yeah, mm, not sure about that one. Uh, violin unlabeled. That is very narrow and interesting uh, f holes there. That is very curious. Yeah, not a fan of that one. Violin labeled manufactured in Dresden. Fairly standard. Violin labeled model Dapre. It's another trade violin. Finally labelled Stodavari model. Again, very really kind of low quality painted purfling there. Finally unlabeled. More trade stuff. Finally labelled Ravello violin maker. That's kind of interesting, but not sure. Vinyl label manufactured in Berlin. All this kind of fake screwdriver antiquing everywhere, not very nice in person. Violin unlabeled. That's just another tradey type thing. Violin unlabeled. More trade. Fine labelled manufactured in Berlin. Violin, 19th century. Yeah, these auctions are quite uh, vague because um, it's the affordable stuff, but uh, sometimes there's a bit more information, maybe because the consigner asked for that to be added. Uh, violin unlabeled. Quarter size violin unlabeled, it's kind of sweet and needs a lot of repair. But Curiosity Valley there. Violin labeled Joseph Guarneris, Gabruda Wolf. That's uh, an interesting looking violin. All this kind of fake screwdriver antiquing, not so much, but these uh, F holes are interesting, like Guarneri type. And yeah, that's a curious one. Violin unlabeled. It's taken a bit of a bash to the corners and to the scroll. I think it's been decapitated. Uh, Armatus labeled violin. That's pretty normal. Violin unlabeled. Yes, yeah, low value or low value, <laughs> low uh, quality trade. Violin labeled Antonius Reef. Slightly interesting uh, back there. Interesting kind of scroll. Net graft. Yeah. Mm. It has some, the back of that is kind of interesting. I will be honest. That's a curious one. £400 on that. Uh, a violin labelled copy of Strad. Wow, that is some serious uh, fake antiquing going on there. Pretty standard. A violin unlabeled. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fairly tradey. A violin unlabeled. Yeah. Um, a violin labeled Nicholas Armatus. Yeah, it's just another kind of tradey thing. 
another Amartis, it's either Estrada or Amarti kind of labels on all these things. And a vinyl label Gustave Bernadel, £80 is the uh, varnish, it's a bit weird on that one. Uh, violin labelled Amartis again, very loads of these uh, Amarti type instruments. Another one with a curious uh, head. Violin unlabeled. Another kind of tradey type uh, instrument there. Violin labelled Johannes Baptista Guadagnini. £10 on the bidding there. Another kind of trade thing violin strad again yeah more trade a horrible scroll there violin unlabeled most of these are just really quite uninspiring unfortunately that's been decapitated violin labeled charles pontine uh interesting looks like it's been completely stripped there unfortunately Uh, violin labelled Franciscus Chirinatus. Interesting varnish on that. Slightly curious. This looks like it's got a soundpost crack on the back that's been closed. You can kind of see it there. Uh, 550 seems maybe a tad high but there we go violin unlabeled another kind of tradey thing violin labeled Antonio Stradivarius more trade half size violin Strad some more trade stuff Half size violin labelled copy de Ludovicus Rosale. More screwdriver antiquing to the to the max there. Three quarter size violin unlabeled. Looks another standardy trade type thing. Three quarter size violin. Another oh god. Got rid of that there. Another Strad type thing. A three quarter size violin, unlabeled. It's another three quarter violin. There's a few of them. Yeah, interesting back on that one. Yeah, it's popular 325, not so you surprised. Half size violin. Three quarter violin, Japanese, copy of a Strad. Three quarter violin. Three quarter Maidstone, pretty standard. Three quarter size violin, unlabeled. It's got some funny stuff going on there. Seven eighth size violin, unlabeled. Definitely a low quality tradey type thing. Half size violin, unlabeled. Seven eighth size violin, Strad label. A three quarter size violin labelled Steiner. Half size violin labelled uh, Strad. Three quarter size violin Strad label. 
another pretty standard kind of type thing there not very exciting and a one quarter violin size JTL I think this is kind of in pretty bad condition but kind of interesting though in some kind of way so open seam on lower bouts and missing uh, a lot of its uh, scroll unfortunately but still curious and we continue a 7 8 size violin labelled Heinrich Knopf a half size violin unlabeled and three quarter size violin unlabeled A three quarter size violin labelled Heinel and Herald. A three quarter size violin labelled Handbuilt in Mittenwald. Way more three quarter violins than I thought. Three quarter size violin Medifino. It's pretty standard. Another three quarter size violin, unlabeled. Another three quarters. Yeah, definitely a lot more three quarter violins than I thought there were. Half size violin, unlabeled. Three quarter size violin, unlabeled. It's a rough uh, scroll there. Half size violin, unlabeled. Saxon violin for restoration. So we don't have that many uh, photos of that. It's a lion head. So fairly similar to the other lion head we saw before nothing too crazy uh, two violins uh, curious um, interesting looking f holes and the other one in a bit of a funny condition interesting kind of back there there's a thing seems open on the lower back interesting And let's see, Ooh, are, we, are we losing internet or did I just press the wrong thing? Uh, two violins, uh, these look like pretty low quality type things. Lower bout seems open. Three violins, looks like very low quality student ones but in good condition. Three half size violins, pretty standard. Uh, nickel mounted cello bow, unstamped. A silver mounted cello bow, unstamped, 120 there. Nickel mounted cello bow, unstamped, so 10 pounds there. Nickel mounted cello bow, unstamped, 80 pounds there. Nickel mounted cello bow unstamped. Nickel mounted cello bow unstamped. Interesting kind of knot type thing there. Current bid ten pounds. Uh, nickel mounted cello bow stamped Ari France. Okay. Nickel mounted cello bow stamped Gotts. We might have a look at. Uh, Nickel, nickel mounted cello bow unstamped, might look at one of the uh, condition reports. Uh, a Paris, a silver mounted cello bow stamped Henri a Paris, £230 there, is the uh, current bid. Nickel mounted cello bow, Ooh, there's a uh, condition report there, missing part of the front. Curious, 140 is the bid there. 
a small silver mounted cello bow unstamped silver mounted cello bow unstamped these ones I think you can kind of see nickel mounted viola bow stamped FN Rora nickel mounted viola bow unstamped silver mounted viola bow unstamped nickel mounted viola bow unstamped nickel mounted viola bow unstamped nickel mounted viola violin bow unstamped so I think we're on to the violin stuff now nickel mounted violin bow unstamped nickel mounted violin bow stamped P Hoyer silver mounted violin bow unstamped Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Silver mounted violin bow stamped C. Bazaar. Silver mounted violin bow unstamped. Silver mounted violin bow stamped E. Herman. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Nickel mounted violin bow stamped Dodd. And silver mounted violin bow unstamped. Silver mounted violin bow unstamped again. 115 is a bit on that. Uh, nickel mounted violin bow stamped taut. A nickel mounted bow stamped Peter Stenzel. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Silver mounted violin bow school of Knopf, Germany. Only £10 bid so far. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Silver mounted violin bow stamped taut. Nickel mounted bow stamped AR Reichel. A nickel mounted violin bow stamped Penzel. A nickel mounted violin bow stamped Vora. A nickel mounted violin bow stamped Arnold Voigt. A nickel mounted violin bow stamped Krenzel. A nickel mounted violin bow stamped Albert Mordell. Silver mounted violin bow unstamped. A nickel mounted violin bow faintly stamped. Silver mounted viola bow stamped J. A. Romney. Silver mounted violin bow stamped Dodd. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Uh, nickel mounted violin bow faintly stamped. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Uh, silver mounted violin bow stamped Dodd. 116 is a bit of that. Nickel mounted bow stamped Bausch. Nickel mounted three quarter size violin bow stamped Marco Raposo. Nickel mounted violin bow uh, unstamped. Oh, it has some kind of documents in it. The certificate from Eugene Cugno. Or a wrapping certificate, sorry, saying then it's Eugene Cugno. Interesting. Uh, nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. There's a lot of bows in this auction actually. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. I suppose as many as there are uh, violins. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. A nickel mounted violin bow faintly stamped. Uh, a nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. And a nickel mounted violin bow stamped H. Poissier Remiremont. And a nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. A nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. A nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. And a nickel mounted violin bow unstamped again. And a nickel mounted violin bow stamped taut. A nickel mounted violin bow stamped Sylvester Macatel. A nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. A nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. And a nickel mounted violin bow stamp GA Prechner. Lots of bows. 
a new command to violin bow unstamped um, a new command to violin bow unstamped a new command to violin bow stamp Bausch a new command to violin bow stamp CA Hoya a new command to violin bow unstamped new command to violin bow unstamped a new command to violin bow unstamped a new command to violin bow unstamped a new command to violin bow unstamped again Silver mounted violin bow unstamped, just lots of bows. Nickel mounted violin bow unstamped. We're not really getting too deep into this, but uh, nickel and bone mounted violin bow. This one's a bit more interesting, actually. Let's have a look at this. £60, the current bid. Interesting frog and bone button. So this one's a bit more curious. Uh, a nickel mounted violin bow stamped gots, and that's a very interesting uh, frog there. That's a bit uh, curious very interesting um nickel mounted violin bow unstamped and a silver mounted violin bow stamped dwarfler 170 there um let's go here then oh, internet's deciding doesn't want to work anymore a silver mounted violin bow unstamped and a nickel mounted violin bow unstamped nickel mounted three quarter size violin bow and a double bass bow interesting not too many double bass bows here so that's it so 10 violin bows various stuff yep yeah, not very exciting five violin bows and five bow sticks varying length pretty standard stuff 10 violin bows varying length yep yeah, normal stuff three violin bows two cello bows and one bow stick varying length yep yeah, standard stuff uh one violin bow six cello bows some other bow sticks pretty standard Eight violin bows, one cello bow, and six bow sticks, varying length. Um, five violin bows, varying length. Mm, looks like there's a kind of baroque type one in that, but pretty standard. Two cello bows and one bow sticks, varying length. Um, Fourteen violin bows and two violin sticks, varying length. Uh, Thirteen violin bows and two violin sticks, varying lengths again. Um, nine violin bows, varying length. Uh, 21 violin bows and 3 bow sticks, varying lengths. Uh, 17 violin bows, 2 cello bows and 2 bow sticks of varying lengths. Uh, 10 violin bows, 10 child bows and 4 bow sticks of varying lengths. Uh, 22 violin bows, 2 cello bows and 2 bow sticks varying lengths. Wow, they're really churning them out on that. I, just, well, I haven't really looked at the pictures, but I don't think it's really worth it. 7 violin bows, 10 cello bows and 6 bow sticks varying lengths. A guitar, okay, something different. Uh, interesting kind of peg tuned parlory type guitar. That's curious. With the case. A mandolin. That's a pretty standard type uh, bowl back mandolin there. Nothing too exciting. A cello case, white. Like a kind of um, proper shipping kind of case. And cello case blue three full-size cello soft cases three full-size cello cases three child size cello cases purple viola case branded JTL purple viola case branded JTL violin case branded JTL oh, interesting violin case branded primavera Three black half size violin cases, three black half size violin cases, case branded W.E. Hill and Sons, a violin case, and that's quite nice. A uh, violin case branded Gewa, an antique violin case, a black violin case, a four pack violin case, that's pretty cool. Uh, a violin case branded Bam, violin case branded Esprit, a violin case in viola case, three violin cases, two viola and one violin case. Uh, bow case with spare for space for 12 bows uh, bow cases with space for 12 bows bow cases with space for 24 bows an antique violin case seven cello spike protectors a paper print of a vial of some kind is there any other information can we zoom in uh, alto vial by henry j interesting current bid 10 pounds 
uh, Les Violons uh, book, Catalogue of Intertrainal, Trainer, Trainer, Dictionary of Contemporary Violin and Bowmakers, uh, Violin and Violino, De Vesci de Geiger. Okay, G.B. Morassi, the violin maker and his craft, uh, the Emil Herman collection, uh, Stradivari and string instruments, um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, two books on Mirko Luthiers, reproduction cat catalogue of the estate of J.B. Viome, the Amadeus, 40 years and pictures and words, monograph collection, volumes 1, 2, and 3. Diction of Violin and Bowmakers by Johnny Dilworth, The Strad. Um, and I think that's it, isn't it? Yep, we've hit the end. Okay, well, there we go. We've completed it. Um, yeah, so at the end, we kind of just went through the bows of it generically, really. Uh, but there wasn't really anything too super exciting to see there. Um, but yeah, so this has been the auction. 356 items. Some interesting violins, like loads and loads of stuff. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It was fairly diverse. Uh, we've had other auctions where there's been like 500 lots and it's just like non stop kind of French stuff after more French stuff. So this was at least a bit more kind of random kind of German stuff, maybe some French stuff, some kind of English stuff, some amateur stuff. So a bit of, bit of everything really. So yeah, if you're interested in the uh, auction, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, check out the uh, all the info on the uh, website and uh, see what you think and see if there's anything that uh, takes your fancy so yeah there's a few interesting bits and as it goes not too bad so uh, check it out and uh, until next time ciao for now bye many thanks for tuning in to the musical instrument investigator i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please like uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon.